Hello, welcome to my video. And the big news is we have a new record on the Tour Divide route. Uh, for those of you who have not been following, um, Lachlan Morton, the EF Education First Pro Rider, has set a new record on the route of 12 days, 12 hours and 21 minutes. It's taken a good chunk off Mike Hall's record, uh, which was uh, 13 days and 23 hours or so. Um, so yeah, like a day and a half or so off the record. I mean, a lot of us have been waiting to see what what Lachlan Morton could do on the Tour Divide for a long time. Um, so yeah, it's no surprise to see that that record uh, being taken. Although it is worth saying that it will be um, uh, an unofficial record, um, mainly because uh, he did have a support crew with him. Um, so so the kind of the rules with the Tour Divide are that you, you've got to be self-sufficient and you're not allowed to support crews and, uh, and things like that. Uh, but obviously, he's a sponsored rider. Um, he doesn't really care what everyone else thinks. Uh, and he's he's got a film crew, so that'd be quite a good documentary coming out later in the year, I'd imagine. Um, he did a similar thing with the Colorado Trail as well, set the record on that. Um, but he's he's happy enough to to not have have the record on paper. And I think most people will agree. You know, we we know what you can do, and most people will know. You know what the record is. Um, so yeah, let's have a little look um, and see. Uh, dive into what he's been doing and have a little look and see see what's been going on. Now the tracker um, was on follow my challenge, um, not quite as good as track leaders in my opinion um, and obviously you know it's, it's quite a big PR thing uh, for EF edu Education First um, or EF Easy Post as they are now I think. Um, so so they kind of uh, have this this fancy coloured map um, and they actually were tracking Mike Hall. Um, you can see his dots still out there. So we're talking probably the morning after it's finished, uh, UK time. Um, so it's still another day or so for Mike's dot to, to finish. Um, so in the middle of New Mexico, it looks like he's about to enter the, the Gila, uh, which is this section before Silver City or just coming through the Gila. Um, a healer, I should say. My pronunciation is terrible, and I did get corrected during my Tour de Vie coverage earlier this year. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the official tracker. Um, but I'm going to dig into it, some social media and stuff, and then use the Riber GPS um, route just because there's, there's a bit more detail in there. Um, so yeah, a lot of the the media coverage did come through uh, the EF Pro Cycling uh, Instagram. Um, like I say, it's, it's quite a big PR stunt for them. Um, so uh, I think they've been quite protective over it. Um, so we've not heard an awful lot. So I'm basically just going to run through their run through their social media, um, try and put some you know flesh on the bones of Lachlan's ride, and yeah, go from there. Um, so we'll also have a little look at his bike. So if I bring his bike up, um, it's kind of uh, Lachlan doesn't really do things conventionally. Um, so yeah, you can imagine he's, he's, he's got a few different changes. Um, so one of the big things about Lachlan taking this event on was he was gonna rest loads. He didn't wanna be sleeping two, three hours. Um, he wanted to, to have big, big night's sleep. So I think he was, he was setting a goal of 12 hours rest per 48 riding. So that's essentially six hours a night. To be honest, I think that's a really good uh, tactic, especially with a guy, you know, a guy with a motor like this. Um, there's been like, you can, you can set a solid like 15 day, uh, pace on the tour divide with five hours uh, sleep a night and i think the balance you know it's, it's been very much skewed recently to um not sleeping and just digging yourself into a massive hole but but personally i think sleep's better um yeah you're, you you stop longer but then you're stronger and you can ride hard during the day um so yeah let's look a look have a little look at lachlan's bike so he's obviously sponsored by cannondale um so he's using the cannondale hardtail here with the the ocho lefty fork um so yeah, interesting, interesting fork. Um, I know Matthew Lee um, used to ride Cannondale and had a few issues with, with lefty forks years and years ago. I'm sure they've come a long way now. Um, so yeah, it seemed to hold up for him. Um, but yeah, the, the one problem with these kind of forks is if you do have a problem, then it's, it's quite restrictive. Um, the lefty hub, obviously it's one-sided, so it's gonna be harder to find replacements if you do need them. Um, but again, it seemed to have survived okay. Um, so he's running the Mezcal tires here. It's a pretty much a you know standard Tour Divide setup. Um, interestingly, not much on the front of the bike. Trying to keep it nice and clean and aero. Got his bottle mounted up there. Um, I actually I did wonder if he's just carrying one bottle. But um, if I put this photo up here, um, I did actually see he's carrying these kind of collapsible flasks. 
and a backpack here. So I'd imagine that he was um, filling up the flask, put them in his back pocket, and then using the backpack when he needs. Um, there's another little photo just showing him with, with that on the back of his tail fin. You know, that's a really good thing about a tail fin setup. Um, really good for, uh, you know, carrying extra stuff on the back there. Um, and he got these mesh pockets as well. So obviously a tail fin rider, um, like myself, got the fancy R&D division bag. So full frame bag, tail, tail pack, and running the, the panniers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think probably the fastest panniers down the Tour Divide for sure. Uh, and it looks like he's carrying a little bit more kit than most people, but I mean, it's so strong, it makes no difference. Um, running the SRAM Axis, uh, let me move my face out of the way. SRAM Axis, um, looks like X1 on there. Um, and the, the, the SRAM chain set with a quad power meter. Um, I'm sure he knows all about his numbers. Um, might be keeping an eye on them. Running the dropper as well. That's a good thing about the tail fin. It does give you a bit of space to have the dropper. Um, and yeah, keeping things clean up front. I always notice on, on Lachlan's bike setups, he never ha has much on the front of the bike. Um, I guess, you know, it's that road, road racing background. He's got this funky stem as well. Um, he runs really low bars. Um, so quite an aggressive setup, pretty aero. Um, and yeah, and when you can ride at the speed that Lachlan can, it's most definitely gonna make a difference. Um, so yeah, so let's let's have a little look at the um, at the social media um, and, and and just sort of run through what happened to Lachlan. Um, it wasn't wasn't plain sailing. Um, never is on the Tour Divide. The Tour Divide is very much in control. Um, so yeah, the first day, obviously starting in Calgary, um, and I think. Basically, he set off to, to ride to Fernie, which is the first big town here, and he wanted to stay there. Um, it's probably a good shout if anyone's riding the Tour Divide, to be honest. Have a good first sleep. I mean, sleeping, you know, two, three hours on the first night, um, it's not going to gain you much in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, yeah, some really nice photos. I think it was um, his brother, Gus, who was filming him, um, or the film crew on the road chasing him, which is just as hard. So, yeah, see, he's, uh, I guess he's taking support here. Um, so... One of the reasons why you know the record probably won't be as um uh, well uh, official um loads of bike packers out to meet him um i mean lachlan's great for the community he's just bringing so much attention to the world of bike packing um you know and people like myself you know riders who've been racing for years you know we're, we're benefiting from it now because there's more opportunities in terms of sponsorship and just general awareness uh, so I've got a lot of time for Lachlan and what he's doing um regardless of whether you think he's an official record or not um it's still a hell of a ride to cover the Tour Divide um, in that uh, in that time. So yeah, slept in Fernie the first night um, and then a nice early start uh, heading into the USA. Um, so it looks like he got some wet weather um, into uh, Whitefish, the Whitefish area. So as you can see, that's the first big climbs. So Whitefish Divide, first big climb in the States. Um, and then you've got Red, uh, Red Meadow Lodge, uh, Red Meadow Pass, um, after white whitefish um so yeah looks like he's got smashed by the weather um as you can see by the photos trails don't look too bad at the moment a bit wet um but they're fairly fast rolling not ten doesn't tend to be too much in the way of mud down there but you know it does catch up um and yeah it looks like he had a, a bit of a cold start so day three he was in lincoln um so lincoln uh is probably one of the first relatively big towns um i think lincoln where is he on the where is it on the map lincoln um if you're going to stop somewhere then you know it's a, it's a good first place um where are we Kalispell, helena it's in here somewhere uh my, my tour divide knowledge has uh has lost me but uh yeah there's um a few good diners in there um as you can see, hot dogs, standard fare for a, a Tour Divide gas station. They're, they look like kind of uh, nut bars, about the healthiest thing you're going to get. And then, uh, yeah, two boxes of Oreos. That's that's the diet. Um, looks like it's on uh, Red, Lodo, Red Meadow Lake up here, potentially. Um, but yeah, looking fast, um, fast setup. I love this. This is like the classic. It's a, was that, a litre and a half of milk and a can of beer. So... I like the way Lachlan approaches this thing. You know, he just doesn't care, does he? Uh, this looks like it might well be, um, do the climb up to Richmond Peak? It looks like it might be. Um, so yeah, so Richmond Peak, and then you go down to Avando. Um, 
and then head through. It looks like camping out, so it looks like he's got some bivy gear with him. He's not staying in the hotels every night. You know, Lacken isn't afraid of, of roughing it, so he's just got like a outdoor research bivy there. Um, you know, this is a pretty good bivy. Uh, that's what I use. Um, so yeah, day three, 564 miles, um, camping out, um, making some good progress. And then day four, interview, cold and wet, so raining. Um, that's the thing about the mountains. It does, it does catch up with you. Um, so he would have crossed these mountains, the Black Mountains here, uh, Helena, and then into Butte, which is this section down here. Um, again, I've been stuck in some pretty bad weather up there. Um, it can catch up with you, and it sounds like it caught up with with uh, with Lachlan. I mean, he is doing the FKT in August. Um, generally speaking, you would have thought it's going to be better weather. Um, you know, you do have fire fire hazards. I think he had to miss cocoa claims on the first day because of fires and road closures. Um, again, that would mean that his record is not official. Um, but even so, you know, it's it, it can change uh, in an instant. And when you're up high in the mountains, if you get rain, it is going to suck. Um, and it looks like Lachlan had a bit of a rough first week. Um, so yeah, this is the one of the gas stations in Butte. Pretty sure I've been in this one myself. Um, and some dude out the front giving away free hugs. So, you know, Lachlan, I don't know whether it's for Lachlan's benefit or the, the dude's benefit, but everyone loves a nice free hug, especially when you're suffering in the rain and the cold. So yeah, so that was day four. Um, so we, we've got a few gaps in our in, in the coverage from EF Education, because it is pretty hard to to cover the Tour Divide in a car. Um, you know, it's, it's quite spread out and quite often, especially if, we, if you're riding at the pace Lachlan is, it's, it's gonna be tricky. Um, so yeah, he got day six, he got to Lava Mountain Lodge. Um, now actually this is where I scratched last year. Um, this is this is, this is is pretty much the bar I sat up and, and made my decision to scratch when I was really ill. Um, but yeah, really cool in there, do really nice meals. Uh, there's lodges out the back if you wanna sleep. I don't know if he stayed there or not, um, but it looks like, yeah, he had some, some peanut butter mud. I imagine that is the climb into Yellowstone. Um, it's pretty sticky when it does get wet. Um, when, when I was there last year, it was really frozen and the mud was freezing to everything. You can see the state of Lackland's bike there, just covered in mud. Um, and then you're going up, uh, there's a big sort of, well, it's, it's kind of semi road climb. Um, but yeah, beautiful views. Um, and yeah, just, just getting smashed. So he's trying to get over to Pinedale. Um, again, big passes up that way, um, really exposed on the ridge line. Um, and if it's wet, it is going to be sticky. Um, so yeah, again, not easy uh, as he's ridden it into there. And then the basin, Atlantic City. So it looks like he got to Pinedale, stayed in uh, in Pinedale, and much like the Tour Divide this year, there's been rain heading into the basin, and it's it's just super sticky. Um, you can see here. I mean, this this isn't quite the basin. This will be leading into it. Um, but yeah, all with the jackets on, hoods up, just doing everything you can to, to keep warm. Um, and yeah, it looks like he's been smashed in the basin. Uh, so the Great Basin, we're talking, we're quite a way down now. It's about halfway. Uh, so you go through Wyoming um, and the basin is pretty much the middle section here. So you can see there's nothing here. Atlantic City is on the edge up here. Um, and then you're, you're basically in the middle of nowhere for quite a long time. Uh, Wam Sutter is pretty much the half point, halfway point of the basin. It's one of the big resupplies before you climb up out of Colorado. And yeah, it's been tough. I mean, we saw this year in Tour Divide, as I said, you know, the leaders just got stuck for 12 hours in the mud. It sounds like Lachlan didn't get stuck that bad. It was pretty bad. Um, you know, it looked like he wanted to quit. It can get you. Um, but it sounds like it dried up um, and he managed to make his way out. So towards Wam Sutter, um, Again, really cold, it's really open there. The wind really whips across. It's either with you or against you. Um, if it's with you, you're gonna fly through. When I've been through the basin, I've, I've done it in basically 24 hours with a nice tailwind. But if it's not, it can take 48 hours even more. Um, so he, yeah, he rode through, the mud was sticky, cleaned up a little bit, um, and then he obviously pushed on. I mean, look at those skies, pretty moody. Um, it's the classic, destroying a gas station. This is, I think this is just before you get totally into the basin there's a gas station just on the edge there and yeah just doing everything you can to keep warm in there um you know into the disabled loo loads of space to just empty your kit everywhere uh, and back off and you can see the you can see from the trail here it's definitely been wet but it's drying up quite quickly um 
and yeah the classic river bike clean just doing anything you can to get that sticky mud off but the thing is once the wind comes up and you know the heat of the day it does dry fairly quickly so you've always got to just keep pushing on on the tour divide because you do never know when it's going to change and i think i think lachlan learned the hard way there um so eight days to wham so a pretty good going um and here we go it's uh it's the classic let's uh let's listen to see what is is doing here So yeah, again, pushing through the, the the sort of the backside of the basin, and the basin's tricky. You think you've got it done, and then it just rolls, and there's rolling hills and draggy, and it, it just really does kind of um, does catch up with you. Um, so yeah, riding pretty hard, pretty hard, um, and it's, yeah, at this point he was ten hours up on the record. So I think earlier on he did get fifteen hours up, but then that slowed him down. Remember when Michael set the record? it was uh it was absolutely perfect conditions um you can see there just battling the mud um it's peanut butter at its finest you can see it just peeling up around the wheel there just makes it hard going makes it makes it hard for for anyone it doesn't matter if you're if you if you're lachlan or anyone else it's always going to be difficult um and then into colorado it looks like it's dry, dried up quite a bit um past indiana pass we've we're, we're skipping forward quite a lot in um uh in the the sort of scheme of things here obviously it was quite difficult to to get any coverage out of there so indiana pass the highest point of the tour divide um let's find it there's marshall pass just before there uh but there's boreas then marshall um and it will be the highest point up here um is that uh, no del nor uh, yeah del Norte, yeah so that's marshall pass so basically the highest point just under four thousand meters before you drop down into new mexico um so yeah again i mean it's beautiful out there but that's the other thing about tour divide in summer well even in june you can see all the smoke in the air so that there have been forest fires i mean the rain dampened the forest fires down further north north but in the south um you know they're still burning it's much drier and you know forest fires are as much of a danger as as rain on the divide and then day 11 um into new mexico and then yeah it's a uh, it's either too cold or too hot on the tour divide and as you can see it's pretty barren pretty pretty dry still suffering from wet feet there um it's just hard to dry your feet out even when it's warm and it's almost worse when it's warm y your feet are wet and then they get hot and then you, you basically bacteria and stuff getting on your feet um it's pretty disgusting um so yeah Lachlan looks like he's suffering with that been staying inside so he's found one of these nice airstream um caravans to stay in um and dry himself out and look at that smoke um it's not good for your lungs uh and it does make the going tough and then yeah into the the final few days so silver city that's the last big pass on the tour divide so as you can see going through um the Gila forest before dropping down into Silver City and that final run into New Mexico, uh, through New Mexico towards the border at Antelope Wells. Um, so yeah, got his shirt off. <laughs> Lachlan doesn't care about convention. Pushing through the desert. And by this point, he'd really had some shifting issues. So I think with about three days to go, his, his actor's rear mech um, had, had pretty much given up or certainly intermittent and he was having to ride single speed. So he ended up bodging together this, uh, I think it's basically a spoke through the mech so he could kind of shift it. He could shift it three years. I've seen this quite a lot with the SRAM Axis, certainly on Tour Divide. I just don't think they really like that sustained wet um, weather. I don't know whether the water seeps into the electronics and just shuts the batteries off or what. Um, but yeah, it's, but apparently it started working again as it dried out. So for me, I mean, I'd love to try the SRAM Axis. I'm, I'm hoping to do so um, at some point soon, um, but I've still got a few question marks on this, on these kind of things like the Tour Divide when it's gonna be really bad weather. Um, I do wonder whether it's just worth sticking to a good old cable shift. Um, but yeah, Lachlan's strong enough to single speed it through the Tour Divide, so no worries about that. And uh, yeah, set the record. Um, so yeah, a very quick summary. Um, for Lachlan Morton's Tour Divide record. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you again for the next one. I've got a few race reports coming up, um, probably do some racing myself in the next few weeks, have a few bike checks for that, so keep an eye out for that. Give us a like and subscribe and uh, see you all soon.
Thanks for watching.